Hello, this is Data Trader Pro with a market wrap for Thursday, May 19th. Um, let's start off. We did have a bearish trend day uh, call. Uh, the dollar weighted buying pressure did trend down all day. Um, it really didn't improve very much. We, we, a little pullback, but we actually ended the day um, at or near our lows of the day on the dollar weighted. Um, the McClellan, uh, our version of the McClellan, the DTP MCC, which is a faster moving McClellan oscillator, did improve from midday onwards and sort of made a series of higher lows, but, but still was quite bearish all day. Net volume trended down just like a trend day, but price rebounded. Uh, quite oddly. So uh, it's very, very rare. I can count the number of uh, times where the dollar weighted was bearish and price made a, a, a you know, basically a full recovery back to, to open. Um, uh, you know, I could cut off a couple of fingers and still count on one hand in a year the number of times that happened. So a very odd day. Uh, bearish trend day was invalidated because we did not close below uh, previous day's uh, uh, range. And so, yeah, so what do we make of this? Um, I'll show you breadth. Uh, breadth, there isn't a green reading all day uh, on the advanced de decline delineators or on the volume uh, delineators, negative uh, on all three uh, major, well, the two exchanges and then the Russell. Uh, trends were, were neutral to bullish all day. Um, sometimes that can be an early warning and there's some buying volume comes in to stocks, but then again, it doesn't agree with, with this. So this is, but we've experienced a rare event today, which was a bearish trend day, bearish trend day on internals, meaning the vast majority of stocks got sold off. And, uh, you know, we had breath readings, uh, you know, into the six and a half, seven to one on NICE, almost eight to one on NASDAQ and uh, uh, eight, over eight to one on Russell. Uh, we, we came off those lows significantly, but as you can see from the high of the day reading, they were all bearish. So very unusual day today on internals land. And I my read of this whole situation is this has a lot to do with OPEX, which is tomorrow. Uh, May monthly OPEX uh, is, is Friday, tomorrow. And the forces that, that be, forces that prevail <laughs> to uh, be able to move markets with large you know, amounts of money, m likely they moved it mostly with the futures today back into the zone that they needed it to be for OPEX, um, despite a, a large quantity of stocks. The vast majority of stocks were sold today. So um, how, what, how that plays out tomorrow well tomorrow's an opex day and they've all obviously pulled things back from a potential waterfall down move in order to um you know stay in a range where they can make more money off the options that they've sold so you know th that's generally the way the market works is that you know large institutions are, are move the market kind of where they need to be i mean they're not always in control all the time um, but, you know, smart money, the big money, tends to move the market into the zone they need it, they need it to be in. So today was very much a day like that, you know, where you, most people sold stocks and then the market rallied back into, into range. And so my guess is probably that they need it to be in that 2040 to 2060 range for tomorrow for OPEX and then whatever... Uh, happens after that. Um, if there's a further decline, it'll occur after that. So we'll have to see. But I don't expect a, I don't expect big moves for tomorrow. Um, I think since we rally back into range, I think we'll stay there. Uh, volatility was up uh, all day. Uh, VIX actually bled off a lot later in the day, as did VXST, uh, to end flat. Uh, VXV was still slightly uh, green. Uh, uh, VIX was as high as I would think about six to eight percent up today. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> very odd readings again. Uh, VVIX was still slightly positive. The Contango situation is improved because of um, VIX expiry on Wednesday it opened. So we now have a new front month uh, VIX future, and that uh, is June. All right. So uh, what else are we going to go to? Let's go to block trades. 
Um, to show you a little bit about how strange this sort of situation was is that, you know, we had cells on SPI up here, a big cell led to the sell off, um, lots of late prints, a line of additional cells with tons of late prints coming in today, even very late. Uh, some of these late prints came in, you know, up to almost five o'clock from previous day's close. So, you know, when exactly? When was price? When was price at two o four ninety ninety eight? You know, it wasn't until, you know, probably really, you know, late after hours yesterday. So we're talking about almost twenty four hours. They, they took advantage of the late reporting and reported them very, very late. So similar idea on the uh, queues. Uh, you know, and, and the idea also is that this is resistance above. We have a clear line of resistance. Should trade pop back up to here? I expect that to be fairly heavy resistance because the amount of sells. Now we did have a large trade here, but at the end of the day, would that be a buy? Probably not, I would think. So, you know, We'll we'll have to see how that plays out. Anyway, the point is, uh, lots of cells above. We haven't made made it back up there, so we're still bearish technically until we pop above these levels, 105.87 on uh, on the Qs, and these look a little bit more supportive, you know. But we still have this line to deal with. Not a lot up there for for IWM to be honest, but but you know, let's say 109.81. Uh, in this zone, 109.93, you know, so we're under 110, I would say, on IWM. We can remain bearish. We get above there, we'll have to be bullish. Uh, let's look at the volatility uh, exchange traded products quickly. Um, yeah, so XIV uh, had more block trades than uh, than VXX today. Now, this doesn't tend to get the same size as VXX because it's a uh, it's an inverse uh, ETF and it just doesn't uh, have the same volume generally, and certainly not in block trades. But you know, potentially some buys, you know, some buys here popped up, buys here, maybe we fell down, we bought some more, and so that's potentially supportive. Of the of the indexes as well, uh, no huge sells on uh, VXX. You see, <laughs> you know, pattern buys, you know, sells, buys, sells, buys. You know, not any real size like the millions we've seen down here. So I'm, you know, I kind of th still think that volatility's got some way ways to go up. Um, yeah, a little bit of a strange day and a little bit hard to read, but we'll look at VXST, which is the shortest expiring implied volatility index. Um, kind of a weak move, you know, not a real. I mean, we came off the lows, but we we haven't really popped in a in a in a major way. So market's still complacent. Uh, we'll look at uh, the VIX. Same thing, you know, kind of a shooting star or inverse hammer uh, candle on the daily today. Maybe that that you know we're above the top bollinger band here so you know maybe we're going to make a trip back to the, the mid zone with where the with with the moving averages is around 15 so you know that's supportive of some more rally in in SPX as well um but nothing really you know pointing towards you know completion of anything yet you know it, Bullish, uh, you know, kind of almost a hammer. I, mean, I guess it's a hammer. It's not. Really, it's somewhere in between a doji and a hammer, but leaning hammer. <laughs> it's uh, and and we pierced the lower Bollinger Band today, which probably provided uh, some support. So you know, technically, you know, this is a, this is a save at the low, lower Bollinger Band. We'll probably travel up a little bit, but you know, we've got not far ahead. We've got all those block trades, so keep that in mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to have a very quick look at is the bond space. So the bonds have been selling off on all durations. Uh, so this is the 30, well, 20 to 30 year, uh, the seven to 10 year, uh, which is basically 10 years with at least seven years of expiry left. Uh, the three to seven is really a five year, and then we have the two years. So you can see everything's been sold off. Um, kind of unusual for a move up in the VIX and a move down in the bonds. They don't always go together, but bonds generally represent um, a flight to safety. 
uh, when the market's selling off, and we didn't really have that on this sell-off. Not much of it. Bonds dropped at the same time market was dropping. So, you know, maybe in anticipation of uh, some th goings on with the Fed, but we don't know. Anyway, we'll stick to technicals more than fundamentals here because, you know, you can chase your tail with fundamentals. This could happen and then this this could happen. It's better to just look at the market and see what price is doing and seeing what the internals are doing, uh, in my view. All right, so... Uh, all of the volatility, uh, implied volatility index is up, but started to roll off today. So, you know, the picture is that some things happened in the market today that are supportive of, of higher prices, or at least not going lower immediately. And I think a lot of that has to do with OPEX. So I think the the whole idea is let's see what happens tomorrow. I imagine we're going to be stuck in a fairly tight range tomorrow. There probably won't be a ton of trading opportunity. Um, and then we'll just have to wait to see early next week if we can get some fall through the downside. And if not, then we found support and we're going higher. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for now. I think that's all we can cover for tonight. And uh, thanks very much for joining us, and we'll see you uh, very soon.